Hello everyone and welcome to part two of how to make a classic IDM sample pack. And what is this part about? Well, we're going to concentrate on the bass now. In the previous video, we looked at ways to make crazy drums. And now we're going to look at ways to make crazy bass. Well, crazy funky bass, you know. I mean, I'm going to go for sort of like a kind of funky... Oh, is that the previous? That's the previous set right there. Um, I'm going to look at ways to make like some crazy kind of generative funky bass lines using all kinds of MIDI processing. I mean, I could play this all in myself. Um, you know, I'm all right on the bass. I can hold my own. I can hold my own on a, on a keyboard, but only if I play in one key. There's only one key I'm good at on the keyboard, and that's C minor Dorian blues. I have like a, a sort of scale that I use... I'm not very good at playing in other keys on the keyboard. Don't ask me to play an E flat. I, I will struggle. But on the bass guitar, I'm fine. I know my way around. And I could actually just play in a load of bass guitar and um, convert it to MIDI and, uh, you know, or actually just use the bass guitar. I don't know. But for this, I thought I wanted to look at interesting ways to use MIDI effects, complex MIDI processing to make generative bass lines in a sort of funky IDM slash 80s R and B type thing. I don't know. I'm going to use operator. And yeah, why am I using operator? Well, I like FM bass. Um, again, you know, uh, I've been for some for some reason I've just been listening to a lot of eighties R and B, eighties funk over the last year, and uh, you know, I just love all that sort of Yamaha DX7 like bass lines that you hear in a lot of it. Um, it's really nice. So maybe I've been influenced there. Uh, we could probably apply the same things that we're going to do to like, you know, like 303 bass lines. 303 bass lines are pretty fun in IDM. But let's start with operator. So what am I going to do? I'm going to create a new MIDI clip. So I'm working. This is the same session as the last video. I'm going to keep the session open, keep adding to it. So I'm going to go, I'm going to make a new MIDI clip. And I might like draw in... A load of sixteenths like this. Let's trigger this. Oh, okay. Uh, I'll leave that drum loop running because that was nice for some context. But I just want to concentrate on operator. So let's pull this down a little bit. Um, okay. So we've basically this is all the MIDI that this is all the actual hard MIDI that I'm going to use. I don't think hard MIDI is really the right word. This is this is the MIDI note data that I'm going to use pretty much. The rest of it is all just going to be MIDI processing. So to start with, um, what I might do is make a MIDI effect chain of different note lengths. Let's pull that back up a little bit, just a tiny bit. Let's start with... 30 seconds, so 30 second notes, so you can already hear how it's chopped it up. Okay, so I'm going to group that and duplicate the chain, command D, uh, set that to sixteenths and then I'll just keep going. This one I'll set to eighths, this one I'll set to one over four, let's see how we get on. Okay, now I'm going to go in and Oh, you guessed it. I'm going to distribute ranges equally around the velocity. Now I'm going to pull in my velocity plugin and have that jump around. So what we get there is we get varying note lengths. And we'll actually, we'll notice this more if we treat the envelope. So if we give, let's pull the release time down. If we, if, if we give the envelope on the synthesizer a large decay, no sustain, and um, a short release, you'll hear how that's affecting the note length. Maybe a little bit of release time. It's a little glitchy. We'll have to work that out as we go. Maybe I'll set the voices to one. Uh, I think re-trigger is for the phase of the... When enabled, notes which are already being played will be re-triggered rather than generating an additional voice. Okay, I thought that maybe that was for um, 
In the case of operator, I thought that was for the phase of the uh, the oscillators. Clearly, it's not. I'll leave it on for now. Okay, so let's maybe shape a little bit of this FM synth. So if I increase this oscillator here, we can hear the FM kicking in. Okay, so I'm just going to make that. I'm starting to wonder if 150 BPM was a little bit fast. I don't know. I'm on my third beer, so tempo is kind of... Tempo concerns are, you know, evaporating from my brain. So I want to use some random velocity here to to do some stuff to operator. So I might maybe use some random velocity to, say, affect the volume of oscillator B that is modulating oscillator A. There we go. Already it's starting to sound quite funky. Let's try it with the velocity to time of the envelope. Let's go the other way. Yeah, that's that sounding good. All right. I'm going to bring in the glide here. Not 50 millisecond glide, though. Let's go for a 10 millisecond glide. Whoops. It's just jumped. All right. Okay, that's good. So we've got some funky note triggers events, note events. Now let's get funky with some scales. Let's think about uh, how to do that. So I guess the first thing we'll do is we'll choose a scale. So I'm going to choose the Dorian mode um, because I think that's the funkiest of scales. Why? Well, because it's got majors in it and it's got majors. majors? <laughs> it's got majors in it and it's got minors in it. Um, I'm going to alter this scale slightly. Um, like this. Okay, so yeah, my favorite, like, um, jazz, funk, psychedelic jam scale is the Dorian with a uh, tritone in the middle. So that gives us a root, the, the major second, the minor third, the perfect fourth, the perfect fifth, the major sixth, the minor seventh with a tritone in the middle. So it's got a bluesy vibe about it, but it's got it's kind of got that Dorian thing going on as well. There's 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 a suitable amount of ambiguity between major and minor in the Dorian mode, which is why I've always sort of quite liked it. Um for certain types of things, obviously. For fun music, for fun funky music, that is the one that I use. So Okay, let's randomize this now. All right, okay. I think maybe there are a few too many 16th notes. So why don't we pull in the... Let's pull in the probability rack at the start. To make it a bit... Add a little bit of sparseness, just a fraction. I'm starting to wonder if maybe I've put the note length at the wrong place in the chain. So this is our note length rack. I might rename that to help to help me later. Note length rack. Okay. Let's put this after the scale. There we go. That was what I was after. Let's pull the probability down a bit more. Okay, so what the note length is doing there is that it's making certain notes longer, which means that as we're working monophonically on operator with one voice, then 
essentially that's kind of superimposing, I guess you could say, portamento or legato over our MIDI data, which is kind of telling operator that like we've triggered a note, but there are still new notes coming in. The note on gets kind of extended. Whereas uh, when the MIDI switches to a different velocity chain where there's a short note length, it says now there's a new MIDI note, um, which to me just kind of makes things sound a little bit more funky, a little bit more humanized. You know, I can imagine like a keyboard player or a bass player kind of having that kind of expression, you know, like no one just like hammers 16th notes or legatos around 16th notes. You know, they need some they need some breath. It's all about phrasing, you know, phrasing, phrasing, phrasing. It's all about phrasure. That's what it's about. Right. So what was I just doing? Now I'm thinking about phrasure. Um, oh, yeah. So what I wanted to do was I wanted to create two chains for the random one that is actually going random and then one that is alternating upwards and one that is alternating downwards. So if I group this random now and duplicate that chain, we'll solo the new chain and we'll tell this to go to alternate rather than random. So it's going up the scale every time there's a new note. I might pull the probability down just a bit more maybe. Okay, that'll do for now. So, so yeah, the random is currently... Uh, I mean, it says alt. I don't know what alt means. I, think, I guess it means alternate, but... Round robin. Yeah, so it cycles around the notes in the scale. When it's set to add, when the sign is set to add, then the alt mode means that it just goes up the scale or rather just cycles through. Um, if we duplicate that again and set it to sub, then it will go down. Will it? Yeah, it's going down. It's going beneath the, the incoming MIDI note. So again, let's assign these to different velocities. Yeah, it's, it's it's doing some stuff. It's doing stuff that sounds good to me. I like it. Okay, so um, it's got personality, you know. We're basically giving Ableton some personality. <laughs> but we're deciding what the personality is. We're playing funk god with, with Ableton, that's what we're doing. All right, let's unsolo that. So yeah, having the note length maybe at the end of the chain was was a was a good idea. Okay, I think I maybe might like bring in the third oscillator. I'm, this one's going to be a square. The course is going to be quite high, maybe much higher than that. Maybe let's see what this is like. Oh yeah. Almost got a vibraphone thing going on. But we've got plenty of low end coming from that first oscillator. I wonder if I could like fade that. Do you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna um, I'm gonna make a copy of this clip, but it's going to be I'm gonna trash these notes. Whoops! I'm gonna trash these notes, and I'm actually going to have the same note coming in, but it's gonna be at eighth notes rather than sixteenth. And I'm just gonna use a follow action to flitter about between the pair of them maybe at every three beats. Oh no, that might be a bad idea because that means that they won't land. Let's say every beat it's gonna oh, yeah. Let's just let's just see what it sounds like. Let's see what it sounds like. So now it's bouncing between sixteenths and eighth notes every so often. Um. 
It's good. It's good. <laughs> okay, I'm going to give oscillator A a little bit more release time. A little bit more decay time, I think. Well, I've maxed out the decay times. We don't need to worry about overlapping notes because we're in mono, one voice. Okay, I'd maybe like that third oscillator to be a little bit more choppy changey, so let's see. I'm not I'm not convinced with that envelope anymore. Let's apply some velocity to the volume. Uh, let's look at oscillator B, maybe. Let's see what's... I kind of want, um, I kind of want to use the FM to sort of simulate a more aggressive pluck on the bass guitar, you know? Which I think is what a lot of those old uh, DX7 uh, bass lines from the 80s were trying to do, you know? Like, the, the, the harder you press, the, the more pluck you're kind of getting. Because, it, you know, essentially, the, the DX7 in the 80s was a synthesizer that was designed to simulate uh, things that existed in the real world. And, you know, but you didn't need to go and, you know, you, you didn't need to, like, rent a harp. <laughs> you would just use the harp preset on the DX7 to get the harp sound, you know. Um, it, it, people weren't necessarily using it um, for sound design. They were using it more as, like, a library synthesizer, um, which shapes uh, a lot of, well, this is my interpretation of it, it shapes a lot of, uh, music at the time and and people's approaches with it so i kind of want to simulate that right now <laughs> in some weird way funky bass some of the notes are a little high maybe i should come down an octave on the midi clip so i'll select the notes hold shift go down there we go Okay, let's have the let's have the sixteenth notes at C two and the eighth notes at C one. That's that's all right. I'm still a little bit uncertain about these this note length. Thing. Maybe I was. It might just be that because we're going so fast. Let's hear, let's hear it. Let's hear it like at one ten. See what it's like at one ten. Let's pull in our our drum loop that we made in video one. the probability maybe the probability is not just doing it enough for me Okay, that's fine. I'm going to 
to go back to 150. Um, yeah, that, that was sounding pretty good for me. I mean, in the context of what I'm trying to show you here, is that it's not necessarily about the bass synth sound. It's about the MIDI processes in which to generate the notes in order to come up with, um, you know, interesting generative ideas for bass lines, for funky bass lines. Um, so maybe what I might do is that I'll record the audio the operator spits out and I'll record the MIDI that the processor spit out as well so that we have like a choice. Um, you know, maybe the MIDI might come out really, really good, but the sound isn't quite what you're after. But you could use that MIDI to trigger another synthesizer or like another preset on on something that that you like a little bit more so all right i'm kind of happy with that but i might do a little bit of beat repeatery stuff because i think it's nice to repeat phrases it adds musicality so let's pull in the beat repeat we're back at 150 now so it's going to be Okay, so that's my default beat repeat preset. I'll maybe just do like some variations on that. Give them a 40% uh, chance. And I like to use multiple beat repeats, but each beat repeat is just repeating a little section of the of the loop of the of the, the bar, I guess. Let's give that 40% too. Let's maybe put another one here. Let's say this one to go for one over six. There, yeah. Oh, where have I where's it gone? Okay, alright. Let's take a copy of that, put that there. Let's put this one at the end. Give that a sixteenth. Yeah, I was still maybe I was still maybe like operators to be a little bit more interesting. How could I do that? I could maybe use the LFO. Okay, maybe why don't I route the LFO to not the, well, yeah, maybe the pitch of oscillator C. I'll use a noise. Is that the one I want? No, sample and hold. I use a sample and hold, sync, re trigger on, the rate really low, the amount up full. So now oscillator C's pitch is being modulated by the LFO. Yeah, 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 that's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. Um, maybe let's overdrive it a tiny little bit. Kind of, it's kind of got like a kind of robot slap bass thing about it, which I quite like. You can hear how sometimes uh, the the random. Uh, so if you remember earlier on, we we had like three chains of the random, and each one is. Oh my god! How do I navigate to that? There we go. So we've got some that are random and then we've got some that are alternating, which means that we get these little ascending phrases, but you know, ascending and descending phrases, which I think humanizes it quite nicely. Um, but there's also room in there for just like random skitteriness. <laughs> and then the beat repeat the, the beat repeat makes it licky you know if you're if you play guitar or play bass like me then sometimes you do little licks you you you, you repeat phrases you know because you're licking out you you you're licking it up <laughs> Okay, that, 
that overdrive might be a little aggressive. I might just back it back a little bit. Sounds nice. All right, so let's uh, resample that. <clears throat> Excuse me, but let's also resample the MIDI. So I'll create two new tracks. This time, I'm aware of the mistakes that I made in the previous video. Although, do I have the capacity to overcome those mistakes in this video? I'm not 100% sure. I'm going to create a new track and I'm going to create a new MIDI track. So the MIDI track, I'm going to receive the MIDI from operator 10. And we're going to go post effects. That means that we will get all the MIDI after all the MIDI effects processes. If we do it pre effects, then all we get is just what's in the MIDI clip and we don't want that. So post effects is good. That's what we want. Um, we'll put monitor on just so that we can see that it's doing something. Um, let's mute the drums and set this channel to, I'm gonna, I'll name this one this time. I'll say bass resample. Okay. And so we're only gonna record the... Okay, maybe, maybe I might wanna do a little bit of dynamic processing on there, but like after the last one, I've kind of, I'm questioning my confidence for dynamic processing, which is kind of why I just use drum bus. Because <laughs> it's kind of like, hey, don't know how to use a compressor? That's fine, just use drum bus. Oh, Let's go minus two on the drum bus. Where's that overdrive? Oh, it's there. Oh, suddenly it sounds a little bit too aggressive. Let's pull this down a little bit. Oh, it's good. It sounds good. Shit, we gotta record this. We gotta record this as soon as possible. Right, so I'll maybe be a little bit less aggressive with the transients. Okay, all right, let's get ready to record this. So we want to, I'm gonna hold command to arm both these tracks. I'm gonna select both these clip slots. Get my metronome going. And then I'm just gonna hit go. Oh, I forgot to arm this track for resampling. Duh. <laughs> but you can see, if we look at this clip now, you can see that it's recorded the MIDI processing rather than whatever MIDI was on that clip. Anyway, let's do that again. So again, I'm probably going to record something like... I'm a little bit pushed for time, so I'll record 64 bars but I'm going to slice them into four bar bits using the same hack that I used in the previous video. I guess one of the uh, one of the other good things about you know IDM as a genre is that there's lots of flexibility for 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 sounds to like change over time you know which is kind of what I was saying in the in my intro to the previous video about how it's boundless you know there's no kind of restrictions you can you can take you can take it wherever you want compared to other more solid um genres of dance music like you know not that i have a problem with that like you know i really 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 like really nice like kind of industrial warehouse car alarm techno that's really repetitive <laughs> you know that doesn't go anywhere and you know um oh shit i'm waffling i need to keep an eye on this 
Okay, so I... Oops. Okay. Okay, stop baking. Okay, so... Okay, I recorded 64 bars of audio there, and I recorded um, not quite 64 bars of MIDI. But you can see there... Let's turn the pen off. You can see there that... Um, it recorded all of that MIDI with all of the um, all the MIDI processing on it. So, you know, there's nothing stopping us just like jumping to this MIDI track, pulling in a, a different instrument. Let's go with analog and making a new sound, a new bass sound with this MIDI. Let's see what we get. OK, so let's maybe say let's, we want it to be mono. We could maybe try and do like more like a 303 type thing, although I don't know uh, really how well I'm going to pull that off with analog, but let's see. Um, well, that sounds alright actually. <laughs> it wasn't that hard at all. Um, yeah, that's all right. I mean, it's analog, analog does this glitchy thing when, when you adjust the envelope, it kind of glitches. And I don't know if that's because it's simulate. I doubt it's because it's simulating an analog synthesizer or because it's badly designed. Can you hear that glitch out? That's, that's not, I love analog though. This is it. I do really, really like this synth synthesizer. But it's really kind of like hard to sort of like, you know, tweak that envelope because it sort of just glitches out a little bit. So yeah, that like the you can hear the note length working there because we're not just getting down, 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 down. We're getting down, wah, 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 wah. you know, we're, we're getting extended note lengths uh, after a new MIDI note, which will make a difference to how your envelopes behave in your instruments. <laughs> Okay, that's fine. So I'll leave that in there for now. So now we need to um, chop up our FM bass sounds. Uh, let's look at what the peak values are here. So this one's this one's peaking nicely at minus two. Why weren't the drums doing that? I've got a bee in my bonnet about this. Okay, there, in my opinion, there are some juicy bass tones going on in there. Right, so we're going to slice it up now. But I want to slice it into bars of four. I want each loop that I slice to be four bars long. So we can only slice, as I discussed in the previous video, we can only slice uh, at maximum per bar. So in order to slice this into four bars, we're going to have to divide it twice. So if we listen to it now, it's going to sound rather comedy. Because it's like... But that doesn't matter because when we slice it to sampler, sampler is going to ignore the transposition and just slice the raw audio file. If I've done this right. So... Yeah. Okay, I'm fairly certain this is right. So let's go slice to new MIDI track. Let's say bar. And then let's go slice to sampler. This is 64 bars long, which means we will get 16 slices. That that sounds okay to me. Let's have a look. Okay. So, excuse me, the MIDI clip will slice it according to the 
resolution of the clip that we use to slice it. But that doesn't mean that the audio is at that resolution or transposition or whatever. So if I now multiply this clip twice, each of these MIDI notes is now four bars long. You can see one, five, nine. Okay, let's listen. <laughs> beautiful that is just what i want so i'm going to go into the zone editor i'm going to select all the slices and i'm going to go crop now last time i was foolish about this and probably if you keep doing this in the way that i'm doing it you're going to run into problems because you're going to get um duplicate file names I don't know if that's because this is just the way Ableton behaves. I did name the track and the, 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 the file that is being sliced is also named. It's a little disappointing that it renames the slices slice one, slice two and not base sample, base resample two, slice one, slice two, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You need to watch out for that stuff later on. Um, Maybe I'm doing it wrong, I don't know, or maybe that's just the way Ableton behaves. But keep an eye on that, because that is going to give you a hell of a lot of ball egg later on when you need to re rename your samples. I mean, I'm doing this all in the same project. I mean, there's no reason why I need to do that. I just, it, partly because of convenience, because this is, a, this is a YouTube video and I'm sharing this on Patreon. But also because like, I want to sort of refer to things that I've done in the past so that when I get to the end I can kind of consolidate everything but it might be a good idea to do this in separate projects so that you don't get these clashes um I can't really come up with a an alternative solution to that I'm gonna do it anyway I mean it would be nice just to drag them from sampler back into the session I don't want to criticize Ableton. I think they make great work, great products, but um, this is slightly jarring. It would be nice to just pull that. Now that I've cropped that, it would be so nice to just pull that back in. Manage sample. Let's go manage sample. Let's see what happens if we do manage sample. Maybe we can just pull it in from here. No, we can't. All right, never mind. So. Okay, can we change it? No, let's just accept it and move on. So where are our clips now? Show in browser, okay. So yeah, you can see that we've, oh no, hang on. There, ah, you know what I did? Ah, so what I did was I saved this as a new project. You can see that this is actually part two. The previous project was part one. And I haven't consolidated or rather collect all and saved everything in this set to this new project yet. So collect all and save is going to help you out here, or at least it's going to help me out here. <laughs> so even though that this current project has files in it from the previous project, they've not been saved within the project. The current project only has what I've done within this current project, as you would think. So it's not until that I do collect all and save, even though I've saved this as a, as, as a new project name, I've gone save live set as, it's not until that I do collect all and save that all of the files from the previous project will get gathered into this one. So actually this has worked out fine. So here we mm -hmm. have all our slices from that uh, little base resample jam we just did. So let's dump them all in there. And let's rename the track base. Let's just call it base loops. Let's call it FM base loops because it was a bit FM -y, wasn't it? Okay. So yeah, there we go. We've got like a load of nice loops here. Let's have a listen to them. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. 
So probably, probably what I need to do is actually put the master at zero and pull everything else down and stop being such a peaky, stop being such a peaky blinder. though like we kind of just basically just made a load of random junk but like because we've sort of snipped it up into these chunks these little nuggets as we hear them over and over again we start to think yeah I, yeah i can vibe to this man yeah yeah it's like it, yeah it's got something you know and like maybe it might not but like when you're in those moments where you want to make some music and you don't really have any ideas you're a little bit stuck you can just go to these recordings and just go oh what's this Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's this is all right, and it might you might not end up using it, and that doesn't matter. What it does is it just sparks a little thing in your brain. It kind of makes it gives you a little bit of motivation. It kind of gets you get, gets you oiled up, you know, and then that will lead you on to go and make something else that actually will end up being the thing that you want to share with people or not. You know, you don't have to share your music with anyone. You can you can can just be for you if you want. It's up to you, whatever. But like, you know, they're just little. They're just. Little things, you know, little snippets of inspiration that you've that you've come up with. You've come up not someone else. You have. You've done it. Okay, well I think that is plenty to do with the bass. I might maybe revisit uh, doing bass in a later video when I maybe do the the third part of uh, the, the third video. I was thinking I would maybe do more sort of melodic synths, pads and stuff. We could probably revisit that because sometimes you might not want a bass that's so you know you might want something that's a little bit more bowed a little bit more long it's got a little bit more drama to it a little bit more envelope you know and uh i don't have time to do that right now because i've got to go and do some work so uh we'll wrap it up there i hope you enjoyed that um and i shall see you in uh part three i'm gonna wrap this up now that I'm going to zip up this set and go and put it on my Patreon. If you would like to support me on Patreon, you can download this plus everything else that I've ever uploaded since I started doing Patreon. There's all kinds of stuff on there. Ableton live sets, samples, max patches, blah, 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 blah. Um, and I would appreciate it and it will uh, support me to keep making stuff like this, which you might want if you've enjoyed it. I'm not very good at these sort of outro things, you know. Oh, please, please. Please do it. Please give me the thing. Please, please subscribe. Please smash the like button. Please do it. Oh, <laughs>